It's been over a decade since Fulham's unexpected run to the Europa League final, and with the club competing to qualify for European competitions, the goal of this rebuild is to match that historic 2009-10 season. Fulham have made smart transfers in recent windows, with many players achieving the form of their life under head coach Marco Silva, probably none more so than Alexander Mitrovic, who set a championship record for goals scored in a single season. I've simulated results until January, leaving us sixth place in the Premier League standings, and with the transfer window now open and 35 million in our transfer balance, we'll make our first signing of this rebuild. The club has looked for defensive cover at right back with rumors tying them to Arsenal Cedric. But my preferred signing is Callum Chambers, who was one of the few bright notes of Fulham's relegation campaign in the 2018-19 season. The former Arsenal man might be one of several Aston Villa players cleared out with Unai Emery now in charge. Versatile enough to play at center back, right back, or center defensive mid, he's going to give us the cover and squad depth that we're looking for. This only ended up being a 5 million transfer fee, actually less than Chambers' current evaluation of 5.5 million. But we won't won't be stopping there as we had a few injury concerns. Harry Wilson out for at least a few weeks with a long-term injury and Dan James had been recalled by Leeds due to lack of playtime. As someone that started watching the Premier League in the late 2000s, there are a few more iconic American players than Clint Dempsey. He spent five very successful seasons at Fulham before moving to Spurs, scoring one of his best career goals in the quarterfinals of the Europa League against Juventus. So it made sense for me to sign an American player and someone coming off of a great 2022 World Cup with the United States. Tim Wea opened up the scoring for the U.S. men's national team with a early goal against Wales. The son of legendary striker Patrick Wea, Tim already has some incredible achievements in his early career, part of that Lille team that won Liga 1 in the 2020-21 season. There have been some rumors as of late tying him to the Premier League and Fulham, so a 7.5 million deal is something I had no problem completing as we signed him for less than his valuation. But we'll move forward with our first Youth Academy report. Sebastian Green is our homegrown talent for this save. The 16-year-old English center forward has potential of 76 to 94, seeing some good growth in the first half of the season up to a 66 rating. But with the changes during the transfer window, this will be our starting 11 and substitutes moving forward. Mitrovic taking over as captain. I did find it interesting that some big clubs were already looking to acquire Mitrovic's signature. But we'll move forward to the end of the season and we do achieve a sixth place finish in the Premier League, along with decent runs in the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. Spurs end up winning the title with 78 points. Manchester City, Chelsea, and Manchester United rounding out the top four spots. Looks like both us and Liverpool will be in the Europa League next season. As for the relegation zone, it's Leeds, Nottingham Forest, and Bournemouth to go down to the championship. Burnley and Norwich see their return to the Premier League alongside Sheffield United who win the championship playoffs. Not a bad season for Liverpool though as they do end up winning the FA Cup final against Leicester City and also were victorious in the Carabao Cup final against Bournemouth. Atleti win an all Spanish Champions League finals, they defeat Barcelona on penalties. Roma seemed to do just fine without Mitrovic as they won the Europa League this season coming off of last year's Conference League victory. And Nice will win the Conference League as they defeat West Ham in the final. This is the sort of output I'm expecting from Mitrovic as captain. 17 goals from 42 appearances. Pereira has seen a spark to his career ever since he transferred to Fulham, accumulating 7 assists from 27 appearances. And during Green's loan spell at Ghent, he went up to a 69 overall rating, but the big question mark moving forward is what's going to happen with Manar Solomon. He's grown leaps and bounds in his rating, but he has his loan spell expiring with us, and also has his contract running out with Shakhtar Donetsk. With that said, he looks to be very happy at the club, so we'll just have to wait until next season to see what happens. But we will have one departing player as Cabano joins Nantes on a free transfer at the start of season two. Our manager rating staying steady at an 80 overall as Fulham see their return back to Europa League football. I'm curious to see how we're going to perform in the Premier League as well as European competitions as we take a step up in this second season. But if you're enjoying the content so far, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. For board objectives, we are looking to sign a crucial player either to the midfielder or forward position for domestic success. Looking to maintain results as we try to qualify for the Europa League and reach the round of 16 of the FA Cup. And not too ambitious from the board for continental success as we've already achieved this objective. Our budget has seen a rise close to 60 million and our first order of business will be to complete this free agent deal for Manar Solomon. Whether he's going to stay at Fulham or move on to another club when his contract runs out is going to be one of the biggest decisions for Fulham in the near future. He is just now returning from an injury that left him out in the first half of the Premier League season. But we of course are happy to have him back in this simulation and if we want to make a late run in the Europa League I think he's going to play a big part in that. Building upon our experience now in our defense we're going to sign a player that has moved around a lot in recent years. Hector Bellerin was a longtime Arsenal player before transferring 
to his dad's favorite club, Real Betis. He's now ended up at Barcelona, not featuring all that often for them, so I think a move back to London might be good for a player that still has a few years left in his prime. He will offer us that experience in the Premier League as well as European competitions. As we complete this deal for 17.5 million, a bit more than I would usually like to spend, but who knows how much Bellerin will be able to develop over the next few seasons. It's not uncommon for Premier League clubs to look towards the newly relegated championship sides, and with all the American signings as of late for Fulham, I figured why not keep that going as Tyler Adams will be our next addition. And he's probably my favorite U.S. men's national team player right now, of course, captaining the team for the 2022 World Cup. And I wouldn't be shocked to see him playing for a top Premier League side within the next few seasons and consistently a part of European competitions. It's a 20 million move, a great deal in my opinion, as this is a player with a lot of upside and it wasn't that much more than his evaluation of 17 and a half million. But I want to focus a lot of attention this second season on our youth scouting. Of course, we had our homegrown talent develop in season one. I want to set up another network in England as we search for any type of player and also add a few five-star, five-star scouts. Dylan Burns will be setting up a network in Australia for nine months looking for a goalkeeper. The motivation behind this is to find a player similar to Mark Schwarzer. I know Fulham have gained a fair amount of Australian fans just from this player alone. He established himself at Middlesbrough, but he spent five great seasons at Fulham and was also part of that 2009-10 Europa League final run. Just in case that scouting network doesn't work out, I will be signing Grand Qual, who is currently the highest potential Australian player in FIFA 23. He was part of Straya's 2022 World Cup roster, and although he's recently been signed by Newcastle, he has been loaned out, so I figured why not add him. If you're doing a Road to Glory save, he could be a very good option for you, as he only was part of a 3 million deal, a little bit more than his evaluation of 2.6 million. But our final 5-star, five 5-star five scout will be Roberto Vidal. He'll be setting up a network in the Republic of Ireland. We are going to see a few departures as Kevin Babu hasn't featured enough to justify his transfer fee last season. It's a 10 million move out to Villarreal and Joe Bryan will be leaving for the Eredivisie as he joins up with PSV for 2.75 million. Our season will see it start against Newcastle United and while there have been a number of changes to our starting 11, I'm confident what this team can do across all competitions. We managed a late draw in our season opener, and now we can look at our Europa League group. We've got Real Batiste, Micheland, and Helsinki. Diego Lina is one of the top talents at Real Batiste. He's actually recently completed a loan move to Liga Mekis. As far as Michelin goes, Gustav Isakson is their top potential talent, currently at a 74 rating. And for Miska Yultovia is the top potential player. Hasn't developed quite yet as he's right now at a 60 overall. But this is the kind of start we wanted as we've achieved a Manager of the Month award for October. Kind of surprised by this because we weren't all that great in the Premier League with a single win and three draws, but technically we go undefeated and we'll see how results are going in January 2024. We're nowhere in sight of the top eight spots, but as we scroll a little bit further down, we are securely mid-table in 10th, but we did quite well in our Europa League group, just losing a single match, which means that we have one fewer match to play in the knockout stages. Some pretty good development from the squad and we won't see any additional rivals in January. As we start off in the Europa League knockouts in the round of 16 against Athletic Club Bilbao. Iker Munia Ayin is one of several Bilbao players that have stayed loyal to the club. He's now at an 84 overall. But on the attacking front, they were completely absent as we secured a 2-0 win in the first leg and a 2-1 victory in the second leg. 4-1 in aggregate puts us up against PSV in the quarterfinals. The club that Joe Bryan transferred to still has Xavi Simons. He's loving life in the Eredivisie and he's at a 79 overall rating in this save. It's another 2-0 result in the first fixture. PSV bring one back in the second leg, but it wasn't enough as we will be advancing to the semifinals where we'll play Porto. Jogo Costa, the player to look out for at Porto as it's going to be difficult for us to score goals. But Mitrovic is a tough striker to stop as he scores a brace in the first leg. And with the second leg upcoming in May, we do get a manager offer from Roma, who we've had a lot of ties to in this save so far. They wanted Mitrovic earlier on. Now they want us to take on the job. We, of course, will be declining that. But if you were curious, this is the squad they're working with. A pretty strong one. And honestly, one that's decent enough to be competing in the Champions League. But returning attention back to Fulham, we see zero goals in the second leg. Not the most eventful way to reach the final, but we'll take it as we face another Portuguese opponent with Benfica. We're not in the best run of form, especially for Premier League action as we approach this final, but 
We don't need to worry too much about our Premier League performance. City will be taking the title away from Spurs as they were equal on points, and although 11th place is less than I would have liked, we stayed clear of relegation and we can now try to get the job done in the Europa League. For relegation, it's going to go to Brighton, Norwich, and Sheffield United, where in the Championship, Nottingham Forest and Leeds will see automatic promotion, Bournemouth joining them as playoff winners. Another pretty late run in the FA Cup as we lose to Manchester City in the fifth round. Liverpool continuing their cup dominance as they defeat Manchester Manchester United in the final. It was a tough draw in the quarterfinals of the Carabao Cup where we lost to Liverpool as they go four for four in domestic competitions, beating Newcastle United 2-1 in the final. It's another appearance in the Champions League final for Atleti, but Bayern were victorious this time around. And a surprise winner for the Conference League is it's Anderlecht, who have seen a swift rise defeating Fenerbahce in the final 2-1. But the only focus for us is on this Europa League final. We've done well to reach this point, and it was our goal at the start of this rebuild. Maybe we can take things one step further and actually win the entire competition. There's something special happening at Fulham right now. Not often do you see a newly promoted side to the Premier League do as well as they have, and it would be amazing to see them actually qualify for European competitions if they can keep up their current form. But getting into the highlights, it's one of our new signings, Bellerin, that continues his run down that right side, and a cross goal finish will give us the early opener. Just a good effort to get it by Vlaho Dimos, who is not an easy goalkeeper to get goals by. But still a long time left in this one. We're probably going to need a few more if we do want to get the winning result. But again, this right side seems to be the weak spot of Benfica as a very similar goal this time for Tim Weah to give us two. If Fulham can continue to sign American players, I wouldn't be surprised to see their presence keep growing here in the U.S. But Weah, what a special player he has been in this rebuild, showcasing some skill now on the outside of the foot shot traits. So useful to have in career mode and just gameplay in general. As we get three goals in the first half, I thought we had this one pretty much locked up, but it's going to be Enzo Fernandez, who is probably the best player at Benfica right now. A lot of rumors tying him to the Premier League in the January transfer window, but it looks like he'll be staying at Benfica at least for the rest of the season as he scores a fantastic free kick goal that Bernd Leno will have no way of stopping. And just a few more minutes later, it's Musa now that gets another goal back for Benfica. So all of a sudden, with about 30 minutes left to go, just one goal separating the two sides. We're creeping towards the end of the match, and that's a poor challenge on Tyler Adams. It's actually going to leave him out for several months with an injury. Fortunately, the ref does call for full time, which kind of left me with mixed feelings. Obviously, I'm ecstatic to be winning this Europa League final, but I was distraught to see one of our best players, Adams, out for a couple of months. It's a good thing we won the Europa League because otherwise we would have fallen short in this second season. These are the sort of results that you'd be expecting for a side that has been promoted in the last few seasons. But Mitrovic has done even better in season two. 32 goals across 56 appearances is amazing for our striker. Harry Wilson, a great redemption as he returned from injury, saw a plus two in his rating and managed 13 assists. Usually you see better growth from homegrown talents, but Green is still developing little by little, up plus three to a 72 rating. Kuehl is up plus four to a 72 overall, and probably our next best talent is Luke Harris, who's gone a plus five to a 68 rating during a loan spell. Some solid Youth Academy players added to the mix, including a 15-year-old Australian goalkeeper, a rating overall of 65, unfortunately potential just 79 to 85. Jack Jeffrey in English, right winger, overall of 64, potential 75 to 89. Ronan Curry might be the best of the bunch, 61 rated at 17 years old. The left winger has 88 to 94 potential. And Leon Wright, despite not having the best rating at 48, I think he's much more suited to being a right winger. He's got good potential of 82 to 94. A slight uptick in our manager rating, now up to an 82 overall and Champions League football for season three. If we can find success this season, this Fulham rebuild could be one of the best ones that I've done. Our board objectives are going to be lofty as we look to sell some players and sign crucial ones to replace them. Staying consistent of finishing top six in the Premier League, reaching the semifinal of the FA Cup, and reaching the semifinal of the Champions League. Our budget hasn't changed too much, just north of 70 million. We're looking to see that number rise a bit more by letting players leave. I found it amusing that Arsenal submitted an offer for Hector Bellerin. But Rodok just featured in my most recent rebuild with Cardiff City. I will be letting him leave to another Premier League club at West Ham United as he takes over the number one spot for them for 12.5 million. Vinicius, a backup striker for us, 
going to Nice on a 12 million fee, and Nathaniel Chaloba going to the Bundesliga as he joined Stuttgart on a 3.5 million move. All these transfers were done to find the funds for Dominic Sobolsai. Ideally, he would have stayed over at RB Leipzig to make the transfer a little bit more realistic. But the storyline behind this move is to find a player similar in play style to Zoltan Gera, who I would argue was the top performing player for Fulham in their 2009-10 Europa League run. The Hungarian center attacking mid is the best player we've signed so far and is going to give us a chance of competing in the Champions League this season. It was a big move to complete the deal. We had to spend 75 million to finalize the transfer. Although it wasn't that much more than his evaluation of 66.5 million. Brighton were one of the surprise teams to get relegated and the Billy Gilmore transfer kind of went under the radar for me. He had a pretty quick rise to fame under Frank Lampard when he gave a lot of opportunities to younger players due to Chelsea's transfer ban. The last few seasons haven't gone quite as well for him, but I still think he is capable of being a Premier League player. And for 12.5 million, I won't be complaining about that. He's going to serve a good squad depth role for us, giving us versatility in the midfield. We're going to make one final addition. I felt like having a good backup striker would be the right move. And with Callum Wilson getting up in age, I still feel like he has the quality to shine as a free agent. I'm not sure if he's going to be an important player, but he will be getting consistent playtime. But anyways, we will start our season in the UEFA Super Cup against Champions League winners, Bayern. You look at this team and we may be lacking the quality in some areas, but you never know what might be able to happen with this Fulham squad. We did even manage to win the UEFA Cup. It's another trophy celebration for us and hopefully the sign of things to come here in Season 3. But we've got a tough start to our Premier League season as we face Manchester United and Chelsea. We've also made some more changes to our starting 11 since we last checked. Two injuries in that Super Cup final, including Solbosai out for three months with a broken toe and Harry Wilson out for two months with a dislocated shoulder means that Tim Weah is back in the starting 11. We know his quality from the two goals he scored in the Europa League final. But we're now focused on the Champions League. We've got Juventus Sporting and Shakhtar Donetsk in our group. Vlahovic still at Juve at a 90 overall rating. Marcus Edwards staying at Sporting for the entirety of this save as he's at an 83 overall. And of course, we've got Solomon, the former Shakhtar Donetsk player at our club, but Kornieko is their best talent at a 76 overall. We'll see how things have gone for us in January, and we've seen an improvement in our Premier League standings, just a few points short of Champions League qualification. We left things pretty close in our Champions League group, but we'll be advancing over Sporting because I think technically the advantage goes to us in the head-to-head -head matchups and also goal difference. A few of the previously injured players back in our starting 11, which is a good sign. But our first fixture in the Champions League will be against PSG, who have signed Ruben Neves at this point in time. The former Wolves man now up to an 87 overall. And their quality did show in the first leg, although we're close with them as we managed a draw one-to-one. -one. But in the second leg, it was Mbappe that took over. We were just unable to score the goals we needed to put things level or even ahead. Because of our lofty expectations in the Champions League, that took a hit on our manager rating down to 48. And we have a crucial match coming up here at the end of March against Manchester City. If we take a look at the standings, if we can win this one, then we can get within reaching distance of again getting to a top four spot. Momentum just hasn't been on our side as of late as we lose this one against City. That pretty much ends our chances of reaching the Champions League again. As we close out this season, I thought we might be able to get another year in charge, but we will indeed get the message we all dread that our manager contract has been terminated. A final look at the standings shows that we were just a few points short of getting back into the Europa League, which seems to be the spot where we're most comfortable. But as we take a look at the job offers, it was Leeds who saw relegation in Season 1, returned in Season 2, and just narrowly avoided relegation here in Season 3. It's a fun team that I would be open to doing a rebuild with in the future. They don't have that many Americans in this current squad. But if you were curious, Manchester United win the FA Cup against Chelsea, Aston Villa defeating West Brom in the Carabao Cup. Of course, we got that one positive this season with Fulham as we won the UEFA Super Cup. Champions League going to the team that defeated us, PSG. Porto winning the Europa League against Real Batiste, and Arsenal winning the Conference League against Storm Graz. After we lost our Fulham job, I was curious to see which of our players might move on. Mitrovic making the move to FC Bayern. Timothy Weah staying in England as he moves to Brighton. Anthony Robinson also going to the Bundesliga at Borussia Dortmund. And Hector Bellerin with one of the more interesting career trajectories as he's now a part of Real Madrid. 